what's good from a news media standpoint is things have been changing every day. But this is what I posted this morning, okay? Okay. For the CFL report, and then I'll get to the update. But Commissioner Randy Ambrosi says the CFL remains committed to returning in 2021, but is leaving the door wide open regarding exactly how that will look. The CFL unveiled a full 18-game schedule for all nine teams last November, one that Ambrosi said it remains on track for in 2021. However, the commissioner added the league is keeping all of its options, including teams playing fewer than 18 games, open. But there's no denying the importance of fans in the stands for CFL teams. So pushing back the start of the season until August or September could allow for more Canadians to receive their COVID-19 vaccination and thus be able to attend games. Ambrosi said, quote, we're taking a very committed, very pragmatic approach to this. We're going to play in 2021. We're just going to find a way. Sounded very optimistic didn't it? Mm -hmm. And then right off the bat today, and I have to thank Nelson Hackowich, our VP of Sim Events, directed us to an article by Dave Naylor at tsn.ca today, posted today, that said the CFL won't play without fans. Now that's an opinion piece, but Naylor does not speak willy-nilly. I have the utmost respect from Dave Naylor, but that tells me he's getting that from league sources. So it's almost like that story came out with Ambrosi's Quotes yesterday got everybody all excited, including me. Darren, we want CFL football. We want jobs for these guys. We want the coaches to coach. We want to go to the games. We've in, we've grown our footprint across this country as the CFL show. We got fans from every team. We want the CFL to play. And it's like somebody rung up Naylor and said, wait a minute, we need to back up the truck here because we might not play. So put it out that we not might not play if we don't have fans. It's incredibly discouraging and I haven't really had you on since this all came down almost two hours ago. And I'm getting a little annoyed because my life does not depend on the CFL anymore. I want it, but we'll survive without it. But for all those people that don't and can't say that, I'd be pretty pissed off if I was them. Yeah, I would too. You know... We've been we've been wanting the commissioner to come out and say something for a while, and he did, and and it was great. And to say you're committed to playing, and commit, I think he said he was committed to playing a full season too, which is also optimistic and exciting. Um, but it's really tough to see the other side of it because the insiders, like Dave Naylor, again, the good insiders that constantly have correct information, they don't make things up. They don't make things up. And Naylor doesn't make things up. No. So there's truth to what he's saying, always. And the fact that they're not willing to play with no fans, then it comes back to the same thing well, we uh, heard last uh, year, uh, blaming it on the government. Is it not almost nauseating where we're at? Like I said yesterday, you're good, you. As you pointed, like Naylor's not saying this without somebody tipping him off to say it. And that's coming from the league. Say, we still may not play if there's not vac vaccinations across this country widespread and we can't open our doors, then we're not playing. That's what it sounds like to me. And so from Nelson, he says, with the CFL plan, the NHL released their plan one month before they were set to play. The NBA put out their plan 45 days before they were set to play. The desire for a CFL return to play plan is a little premature at that point. Nelson, that does not go along with what we were told today because the NHL and the NBA and the NFL all played without fans. That is the difference. What I want, and if I was a CFL person, I would be standing and demanding, how are we playing without fans? I want to know. And the CFL saying, they're providing themselves wiggle room mm -hmm. to not play. Wiggle room to not play. But, you know, they're also. it also feels like... and. I don't blame them necessarily, but it also feels like there's a little bit of a fear to say we don't want to play. And not that we don't want to play, but to say we don't want to lose money, you know? You know, it, it, it's that image thing. You don't want to say, guys, I can't go out for drinks with you tonight because I don't have enough money. We're scared to do that because it's a status thing. And I think <laughs> the league is scared to say, look it, we don't have enough money to do this. We can't afford to do this. You know, they're scared to, you know, get down on their knees, right? And, and expose themselves a little bit and be, you know, vulnerable. 
And once you do that, it's very freeing. And it puts you back in power and in control of the situation. Oh, you might get the help that you need. Right? Otherwise, you try and roll with the high rollers of the NHL and the NBA. And you make it work. But you ring up black card after black card after black card after black card. Eventually, the bill comes due. So, I mean, at the same time, if you're not going to play, at least be okay saying why. And we will understand. And I think we'll feel bad for you. And maybe we'd be more willing to put our name on the Grey Cup fan base. Right? But if you're trying to roll with the NHL and the big dogs, it's, it's awfully tough for us to feel sorry for you. But are they trying to roll with them? I, I, I don't know what they're trying to do. And I'm sitting here almost feeling like an idiot going along with these signings and talking about this league and covering this league because there's clearly a huge appetite for it. And then somebody comes along and says, no, 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 we need to create ourselves. A, we need to create a escape plan. Mm-hmm. And I'm sorry, leaders don't do that. And I opened this show by saying I would be incredibly disappointed in the leadership of the CFL if they do not find a way to play. And that's kind of where I'm sitting at right now. Mm -hmm. Um, Todd Pinkney says, well, Dupes was thinking a lot in his office over the last hour. My guess is you just whipped that off the cuff, what you just said. That's right. Am I right? You're right. You're right. Jordan Wall Viewer says, what's the minimum allowed in stadium for the CFL to go ahead? 30% capacity? Well, I don't know. I'd heard 10, but do you understand, Jordan, that people are talking out of all sides of their mouths right now? That's the thing. You have no idea. Am I speaking another language? I think the people that are, the people that it affects the most, the players, the staff, a season ticket holder of which I am, can you not just stand up and tell us what your plans are? That's what's got me upset. I'm just going to speak for me. But it doesn't really affect my life. If I was a player and saying the, the, the course of the rest of my life depends on what this league's going to decide, I would be beside myself. I know. It's... You can, and they, they, they can't pin down the leaders yeah. on details. Right. And those details are what creates the reason, the optimism, right? You know, we want to know. Like, it's easy for me to say, no, no, no. Like, honey, we will get married one day, I promise. We're going to get married. But she wants to know when the ring's coming, when we're getting married. Are we buying the house? Like, how many kids are we having? We want those details. That makes us feel a little bit more secure. Otherwise, she's shopping around for a backup plan, right? Well, and, and in the meantime, by the way, people move on. Fan-controlled football, watching the NHL and NFL. If people have noticed, we could sit here and talk NFL all day, every day, or NHL, or whatever. Like, the world is moving on without these guys. You I had a point you wanted. I had a socially distanced conversation with Shane, who happened to, you know, you know works in the building. And, uh, you know, he's a season ticket holder. He spends $1,000 a seat. That's $2,000 to $4,000 if he gets two or four tickets every summer. Well, this summer, if there's no CFL football, he might decide they're going to get a seasonal campsite up at Waska Sioux or somewhere. And the family might decide that they like that next year. You know, CFL's oh, yeah. coming back. Yeah, but we really enjoyed camping, so we're not going to buy our tickets the next year. You know, people fill their time with something else. Viewer Greg Clevgard says, I don't know a business that can operate in a negative balance sheet. Greg, lots of businesses are. Again, you want to defend the CFL? Go ahead. I've had a guy write into the, our website the other day and said something all, along the lines of who's going to step up with the cash to make it a break-even proposition for the CFL. Do you think the NHL teams are breaking even? Do you think these junior hockey teams that are returning to play are going to break even? They're all taking a loss. They're playing for the good of the players. They're playing for the good of the game and the good of the league. And I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I had a call yesterday with an incredibly large figure in CFL history. And he's very concerned with the state of this league because lack of leadership. He talked about names like Norm Kimball and Normie Kwong and guys that ran, Tom Shepard's name came up as guys that did something in this league. Got it through all kinds of unimaginable crises over the decades. And all those types of guys have been shoved aside for what we have right now. 
and it just seems like they just want to pick up and run. I would rather the CFL dies by going down swinging, going down with a fight, than just packing their tents and, and waving the white flag. To, con- to keep a consistent standard of living or operation, you spend money when times are bad, and you pay it off when times are good. And that's how you stay with consistency. Right? When times are bad and money's not coming in, that's when you spend to get up to that line. And when times are good, you spend to pay off that debt. And this is when oh. times are bad. You have to spend. Three last comments before we roll from Ryan McCarthy. The NFL has two seasons, regular season and off season. They're always in the conversation. Yep. CFL doesn't want to be. From Sports Nut Central says, that's an incredible point. I'm a Ticat season ticket holder and a massive fan, but we can only keep pushing our ticket money credit for so many seasons before we ask for refunds eventually. Jordan Wall says, loving Rod's rant today. I don't know. A lot of these guys in the CFL will continue when the CFL reemerges. A lot of these guys from the Players Association will not. And that's why we're on their side. We'll see you Monday. We're out. Later. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of the Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.